I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we're taking a look at a wonderful Christmas story. It's called Michael Moose Helps Santa, and it's written by a terrific author. Her name is Dawn Harvey Kittle. This enchanting story brings the magic of Christmas to life as Michael Moose steps in to help Santa when his reindeer fall ill. Today, we will explore how this unlikely hero teaches Santa about the true meaning of Christmas and ensures the holiday spirit lives on. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank the team at Bookside Press for helping us put her in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support authors like her by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing her beautiful book. The links are below the interview. So good to see you here today on Spotlight, Dawn. Thank you. Happy to be here. Well, great to have you on the show. This is such a great story. How'd you ever come up with the idea for Michael Moose? Well, it started with, with my cousins in Florida. And somehow or another, we got talking about Christmas. And we said Christmas is love. And that is actually the name of another book. I was going to use the Moose for that one. But it just didn't seem to jive it didn't work nothing came and then when i fooled around with the name after i'd written christmas is love first uh i had methuselah and, awesome. and marty moose and all kinds of and then when i came up with michael moose for some it all clicked and i knew where i was going as soon as i came up with that name because that name does have some significance so that's and then it just kind of flowed once i started just float sounds great sounds great do you i know you live in michigan do you have moose up there in michigan have you seen any upper peninsula we do i'm in yeah. the lower yep absolutely yes, be careful. they can be mean you got to be careful oh, yeah moose. i see them when i was driving they were right at the edge of the road <laughs> <laughs> yeah on the upper peninsula though that's a beautiful area. Well, this is a beautiful story. Give the folks at home an overview of what Michael Moose Helps Santa is all about. Well, as you said before, the reindeer are ill and Santa's going to have to cancel Christmas. And the little reindeer are trying their best, but they're not strong enough to pull the sled. So they had to have an animal big enough. And out of nowhere, this moose appears by the name of Michael. And Santa said, fine, but can you fly? And, of course, he takes off with his big antlers. And they said, okay. So the elves had to make him a harness. And uh, Santa was afraid of the turbulence. I entered the, the turbulence around Antarctic, Australia, and over around the world. And Michael Moose handles that with no problem at all. And he makes a special stop. Okay, great. Well, you're going to have to read the book to find yeah. out what that special right. stop is. That's for sure. Because I didn't want to make, I didn't, and then he kind of, uh, I mean, it vanishes, I guess you could say. Okay. Sounds great. Sounds great. Now, have you envisioned this story as a movie or a TV show or something? No, I really haven't. That would be kind of nice, you know, come to think of it, but yes. It'd be beautiful to see an animated moose named Michael up on the big screen helping Santa out with his uh, big uh, chore, right? Yes, that's yeah. correct. So Hollywood, if you're listening, this would be a great <laughs> children's movie, that's for sure. Now, have you read this book to your grandchildren? I got a sneaking suspicion you have. Of course, and they <laughs> have a copy of it. In and fact, my oldest granddaughter has illustrated my next book that's coming out because yeah. the regular illustrator of the two books of Christmas, uh, he can't illustrate any longer so because of issues. So. so tell us about the next book that's being illustrated by your granddaughter. That sounds terrific. It's called Men Yes. And it's not really a Christmas story. It's about uh, we all have talents. And by using all our talents, uh, we can work together. Wonderful. And the name of the book is going to be called? Many Gifts. Many Gifts. Okay. So we'll look forward to seeing that as well. Is Michael Moose Help Santa? Is that the first book you've ever written? No. Beatrix okay. Floppy Ear Bunny 
is the first one that I wrote in college years ago. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you how many years, decades ago, <laughs> half a century. Anyway, it's a long time ago. And I just decided, oh, I want this published in my lifetime and not wait for my children to do it. So I had it published. And then I don't know why, but somehow other books came along. The other one, the second one was um, Christmas is Love. Mm -hmm. And that has Beatrix in it. And then the next one that came was Magical Forest Series. Uh is Michael Moose helps Santa, and then the fourth one is called Many Gifts. So, Michael Moose is my third book. Wonderful, wonderful. That's amazing. You've been a very prolific writer, then, which is great. And uh, I'm sure you're delighting your grandchildren and other children with these stories as well. Yes. Yeah. Is there a lesson or a moral you'd like the children to learn when reading Michael Moose helps Santa? Yes, uh, there's a moral to all my books. This one is more uh, uh, Christmas is love is that, but this one is what the real meaning of Christmas is not gifts or presents, but the babe in the main baby in the manger. Exactly, exactly. It's about the birth of Christ. Yes, it's not the about birth. the birth of Santa. Sometimes we get confused. Yeah, we get confused. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's a great reminder for children to do it in a fun story as well, that uh, Christmas is about Jesus. So that's a beautiful message. How many grandchildren do you have? Four. Four. Okay. And let's hear their names because they all have to get a little time on uh, TV. Okay. Here. We have Shane, he's 16, Annabelle's 14, Samantha is 12, and Josephine is eight and a half. Oh. She'd be upset if I just said eight. <laughs> I think you need some new ones. Those are getting too big. They're getting too yeah, old. I know. <laughs> you need some babies again. Uh, well, what can that's you do? Not, that's not, yeah, what are you going to do? It's not going to happen. So Exactly. Well, I think they're surely wonderful children and teenagers now, and I'm sure they're a real blessing to you. And I know you're watching one of them right now. You flew to uh, I'm Minnesota. Three of them. And I'm going, and then tomorrow, uh, the oldest granddaughter, Annabelle, she's in trap shooting, and she, we're going to the state trap shooting in Alexandria. Wonderful. Minnesota. And uh, we're making a little trip out of it because it's long. It's not exactly around the corner. And so we're going to stay at a motel and, and the other grandmother's going. They're going to be two grandmothers. Wow. That is one yeah. lucky grandkid. Two grandmas. Yeah, right. Two and, grandmas. And sometimes bigger grandkids are better. You don't see little babies walking around in trap shooting contests. No, right? not hardly. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, yeah, we're going to swim in the pool. The kids are all excited about that because we're going to only go part way, and then the rest of the way early in the morning, all day trap shooting, and then back to the motel where we can relax and then take a leisurely trip home. So we're making a little adventure out of it. That sounds like a great adventure and a wonderful way to start out your summer, spending time with your granddaughter, watching her as she. Shoots those clay pigeons, which is wonderful. Great. All Excellent. Three of us. All. I mean, the and, and the other grandma, too. The two grandmas. And, that, right. that sounds like your next book. Two grandmas and the grandkid. Oh, that sounds interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I think you got a title to work with. Come up. <laughs> <laughs> sounds good. What's your next book? Are you working on anything right now? Uh, well, I'm there's one I'm thinking about of the Magical Forest series where Beatrix and her grandmother, because she lives with her grandmother, you know, uh, decide to put on a meal for the other forest. I don't quite have it together yet, but that's where her parents are going to come in. Then the other one, another series I'm work working on is Yvonne and Yvette series. This is for the middle, middle age or teenagers or young adults or whatever. And, uh, they're looking, it's called The Quest of the Yellow Hibiscus, and that's uh, quite involved, really. It involves um, smuggling, and it involves 
how the girls find it, and uh, different twists. So I'm working on that. That's going to take a lot longer. Great. Sounds like you were the busiest lady in the literary world. And this book you've written is sensational. It is called Santa Moose Helps Santa. It's written a, by Dawn Harvey Kittle. I have a book of it. And there's the book. There's Michael Moose and there is Santa. A good looking yeah. pair for sure. And yeah. beautiful illustrations. Yeah. Absolutely. It's an enchanting story that brings the magic of Christmas to life as Michael Moose steps in to help Santa when his reindeers just can't do the job. Dawn, thank you so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Thank you. I enjoyed it. Oh, good. I'm glad I enjoyed speaking with you as well. To the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford thanking you for your time this time. Until next time on Spotlight.